There's this weird subsection of arts and crafts that some of you might know of where an artist will take like a Pokemon or Yoshi and try and make like a realistic life-size doll of them. Normally inching away from their actual appearance and more towards like a realistic animal and it's kind of uncanny most of the time, a little bit creepy. But personally, I have a fascination with this very strange world. Just there's a cursed aura about them. And so of course I have a rampant desire to contribute to this strange section of the internet. So I studied a bunch of methods on how to make these things, spent about half my bank account on equipment, and will now put 12 hours of work into something that absolutely nobody asked for. So this is what we're doing. It's it's gonna be uncanny. I have wigs. I hate I hate touching wigs. It's like human hair. Believe it or not, it's quite similar to that. I'm gonna explain a bit of the process here, and I've studied up on this. I actually know what I'm doing right now. Normally when I go into a big project for a video, I go into it with high hopes, low expectations. This time, I have high expectations. I'll take a month on this, I don't care. Start off, you gotta make a skeleton. This is gonna be a stationary figure, not like a movable, bendy arms type of thing. And what you do for that is you take foil, you crumple it all up, and you like make a skeleton out of crumpled foil, and you can use tape to hold together if you want. And then we'll use this flesh uh, bake clay, and you're gonna put skin over it. This is the skin. We're literally building a dog from scratch. And then we're gonna cover it in this stuff. This will be the fur, and we'll lather this over it. The fur's a little longer than I'd like it to be. I legitimately am going to take some dog clippers to this thing and, and shorten the hair. And I've got all the materials for the clothes. A real scrunchie. I've never owned a scrunchie before, this is exciting. And we're gonna use epoxy to make the eyes, and we're just gonna slowly craft this thing into a perfect, real replication of his- You know what else I have? I even got grass. It's not real grass. Kind of obvious I didn't just get real grass in a bag. But we're gonna make a base out of this grass. Before we really get into it, I do want to point out this. These are randomly generated. I found a website that randomly generates images. You put it in a keyword, so it's doing Animal Crossing. So if I'm just doodling around and, and using clay and, and making this horrific project, and there's a naked Animal Crossing character on, on the wall behind me, not my slideshow. So far, very wholesome. Look at the little house. Okay, well. You're not gonna just show pictures at her for a while, are you? Maybe this is a bad idea. I'm just gonna get a feel for this. I do this. Yeah, I could see where you could craft this into like a limb and have it stand here kind of a thing. Yeah, sure. Now, this is a schnoodle. It's not exactly what Isabel is, but like generally, that's, we're gonna model the face after something similar to that. We obviously wanna make it an Animal Crossing character. It's, it's gonna stand up. This being the bone structure of it, we do want it to be a little more similar to how a dog's skull would be. And it'll stick out a little at the front. I'm worried with this tape, because this is baked clay, right? I don't know if that's gonna like burst into flames in the oven. Gosh, this stuff is stiff. We don't gotta go too flat, because I think if you ever cut a dog up and you look at the way their skin is, it's pretty similar to this thickness. I'm just kinda... Yeah, something like that. There you go. This is gonna look so, so gross before we put the fur on. And yeah, just uh, putting the skin on a dog. Pretty standard stuff that you do. This cutting board I'm using has like a texture to it. So now the flesh has a texture to it as well. <laughs> Don't like it. It was very different from what I was going for. I mean, it makes sense. I don't need like the teeth and stuff. What, what the heck is that? All right, there's the last bit of, of, of flesh uh, put on here. And actually, the nose will probably make out of baked clay as well. And I'm fully aware this doesn't look like an Isabel skull. Because like, think, think of this way, if you're making something realistic of a character that is not realistic, that non-realistic character was at one point based after something realistic. So then if you want to make the character look realistic, if you just take like Mario for instance, and you just upscale and give him skin pores and keep his nose the same and everything, it looks really freaky. It doesn't look like a human that looks like Mario, it looks like Mario that looks like a human. So if you wanted to make a realistic Mario, then you just make a human that looks like Mario. So we're just gonna make a dog that looks like Isabel. Other people who make this sort of thing, I think understand why I'm making these videos, and that at the end of the day, I'm fully aware that I might not be very good at some of the things I do. But I think people who watch this type of content, who've never seen my channel, then they come over here, like other people who watch making realistic dog out of clay videos, and they come over and they're like, wow, this guy 
guy, this, he's not even that good at it. Why is this in my recommended? I only watch the most pristine, the best dog head makers. There's always an influx. But if I do enough of these, if I do enough dog heads, then I'll become a part of that community to the point where people know me and they'll be like, ah, that's just Peter just being a friggin' idiot again. We are gonna make the nose here as detailed and realistic as humanly possible. The nose does have a sharpness to it. Now, uh, if you just do two little holes for the nostrils, that ain't, that ain't no good because it's just gonna look like a pig. You have to have it kind of curl up like this and then this part blends in a little more. Give it a little more definition for sure. That might be good, something like that. That's actually not too bad. Imagine my thumbnails are eyes. That's like a preview of how it'll look. Well, there's an image of that naked dog. Oh, that's a creepy image, hold up. I think it's like, it's similar to one of these. See, mine doesn't look as creepy as whatever that was, but I gotta make the mouth because I can't just put fur over the mouth and cut the fur a certain way. There's gotta be some amount of like actual dog lip. Flippin' dog lip. <laughs> if you focus on this greasy skull. That's about what we got here. I don't know, it's, it's like horrifying, but also the detail's not bad. We'll get these legs back out and we're going back to this. That's what we're doing. Yeah, something. <laughs> Oh no, I've just done the worst thing. That's worse than terrorism. The sounds, man. <laughs> it's very weird. All right, I can officially say we will have enough clay. This may not matter to you because if I didn't have enough clay, I'd simply cut to a spot where I did have clay and you guys would be none the wiser. But me personally, I am invested and find that exciting due to the fact that I would have to wait for the clay to arrive and would not be able to continue building this thing, that of which I am quite enjoying. Okay, so this is uh, Fleshy Isabel. We'll be good. I do want to cook the head separately than the body because, uh, wow, that sounded weird. That's what Isabel's footsteps sound like. All right, sneak peek. Feels like there's a real dog in front of me, I'll tell you that much. <coughs> what is that? Hey, Google Isabel, this, this is what this is what came up. <laughs> there she is. All right. So this is all hardened now. It was in my house overnight and I didn't get murdered, so it's probably not that dangerous. Today is fur day. Look at how fluffy that is. Finally, some clothes. And as you can see, the weird bumpiness of the skin won't matter anymore. Oh yeah, I forgot I was gonna show you guys just how much hair I took off, dude. Check this out. Whoa, isn't that satisfying? Holy cow. <coughs> this is actually a relieving process as this hunk of flesh slowly becomes less and less unclothed. I mean, technically speaking, none of the Animal Crossing characters actually have to wear clothes because they have fur. That's dog clothes. Although, eh, they probably should nowadays because people are weird. I've also not forgotten about a tail and what I'm gonna do for that, I'm not 100% sure. Can an image of Isabel's tail please pop up? That's a warehouse. Okie doke, it has been fuzzified and groomed and <laughs> it looks way cuter than it should. Like legitimately, I, I don't want it to look this cute. And with the body done, we're moving on to the head and this is gonna be like the make or break part of this. The head has to look good. And the more I'm thinking about this, it's like if I'm gonna make the face look like this, the eyes would need to mount like right here where my fingertips are. That is not a mountable spot. As you can see, there is simply air here. So I may need to use like a little bit of cardboard or something to expand upon the forehead and the front of the face a little bit, but we'll see. It's, it's an undoable process, so we're just gonna go for it. I mean, yeah, this just even looks like a better head shape just from a general standpoint. Now I do have white fur as well. Because if you've ever seen Isabel before, and some of you have, maybe some of you haven't, depends on if you've watched any part of this video yet, you'll notice that the mouth area is actually white. The lips and nose need to be black. And I think I got some good acrylic paints for this. Oh, there we go. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Back in school, they used to call me Poco Holntis. That's a good. That's a good. Uh, that's a. That's a. Ooh. Make sure we get it in this nostril here too. Oh man, did someone did this to you? Focus on the horrific dog brain thing. Very shiny. That's about what we were looking for. Like I know once the fur gets on here, it's gonna look a million times better, but I'm very, very skeptical yet. This gives me hope. This looks like just some messed up dog head. I'm gonna have to be really precise with how the fur lines up with the sides of the nose and everything. It's gonna be a really specific process here. All right, needs lots of trimming for sure. It's really not that bad. Now we're gonna cover the rest with this yellow stuff again. It'll be super easy. I don't have to trim it super short yet, but. So I have this wig and <laughs> what I was thinking is do something like this, right? Something like that, and then that could be the ears. We'll have to have this like that with the scrunchie. And, and once I settle on an idea for this and put it on there, it, it's gonna separate the people who are impartial to the entire design of this thing to either going strongly dislike or strongly approve. So I thought I'd narrate the fun fact for this section. My sinuses were extremely dry during the filming of this. All right. It's a furry dog head. Let's go. All right, we're gonna mount this thing. This is just like how real dog heads are. There's a little bit of cardboard where the neck would be. Makes it smoosh better onto this part. This cannot be undone. There it is. There's a living thing in this house. That's impossible to fathom. Feels like I'm just chopping off a real person's hair right now. Definitely gonna have to shave a spot on the head for the ears. So if this fails, I'm in, I'm in bad shape, boys. <clears throat> also, shout out to this hot glue gun. When did I actually leave this on? Since four-ish. I think this, I think this glue gun's been on since four. It's eleven now. So this guy's a trooper, and also my house isn't burnt down, and that's a big thing that I appreciate. It still baffles me to this day how you can make a gun made out of plastic that burns plastic, and yet it's not burning. Just to further justify why I have like brownish blonde hair, you're not gonna find an orange dog. I know most of us grew up with Clifford. It don't really be that way. Just hate to be the one to break it to you guys. Ah, ah, ah. Look at that. So, next I just gotta trim up the face and that might be a little bit of a process and it's gonna be very difficult to get it looking like authentic Isabel. I now trim face. Fun fact for this speed segment is that this segment is narrated again instead of just using the text format. Yeah, I believe, I believe that's a real dog. I don't see why you wouldn't believe. Why don't you believe this is a real dog? There's gonna be a, there's one other big risk within this process and that's the eyes, the placement, how they end up looking, how I'm gonna make them and I'm not totally sure uh, what exactly I'm gonna do for those. That's gonna be the only other risky part, but this is like the general, I can take a sigh of relief. <laughs> I've at least gotten this far. And I'm just gonna clean all this and then we're gonna start to work on the clothing, which will be hemmed and sewn by hot glue. I'm gonna have to make the clothes while it's on because nothing's gonna fit over this head. Sorry, real tailors. Clothes tailors, not people named Taylor. Sorry to you guys too that I'm making real Isabel. You've shown that picture like 50 times now. What are you doing? Fun fact for this segment. Yes, I did it correctly. All you sew master cutter sewers out there about to ask me, did you fold the seams at the end? Did you measure the waist? Did you soak the linens in frankincense? I did everything correctly. Whatever it is you're gonna ask, I did it. All right, last night I was feeling extremely inspired and I had some really great ideas for how to make everything else in this project. So I thought I'd get a bright and early start. It's about 2.20 p.m. right now. We're gonna make a wax mold for the epoxy of several different sizes. And then we can choose which one fits the dog best. And I thought this would be the best idea because I have no idea how to work with epoxy at all. And it's entirely possible that it will stick to everything. And I don't own pan. All right, we're very low on candles. I'm gonna fill this up with wax, heat it over this thing, 
Let it dry enough to where it's moldable and then just press these into the top and that'll be probably pretty good. The eyes don't need to stick out that much. All right, time to destroy these candles. <laughs> This might be the stupidest idea I've ever had. This is the one thing I did not research. Try not to get the wicks in there. I feel like a blacksmith forging. Uh, actually, I don't. I just feel like an idiot melting wax. Shut up! This might be the only thing I ever do in my life that is at all similar to what I'm currently doing. I'm gonna let it cool just a little bit because I really don't want to melt my little plastic. Uh, who gives a crap? Molten wax. Now, a little trade secret. If you take some cold water and you put little drops inside each of these measuring cups, not only will they sink down more, but it will help harden the wax at a faster rate. Doing this in the fridge would have accomplished both of these things much better. All right, well, that's drying. We're gonna do some more baked clay stuff because I've had ideas to do details for the paws and why can't I just do the bell out of baked clay? Great angle you set up, by the way, Peter. Ignore the fine meat. Slice off a bit of this cheese. Vomit, I've eaten too much cheese again. Perfect. All right, I don't think I need to make anything else out of baked clay. The tail needs to be made out of cardboard so that it's not heavy. Otherwise, mounting it will be a problem. <sighs> I don't even know why I let you guys into this work area. You don't understand. There we go. This one's definitely a little deeper than it should have been. And then we shall begin the resin process. Have I gotten taller? Fun fact, went back into the room for a minute to work on the stand and the clipboard and the paws and different things. I don't know why I did that before the resin. Maybe I got the footage messed up. So my, my apologies if the story of how I made a fluffy dog thing is getting overly complicated. All right, both molds are done. I had to redo one of them, but they both turned out pretty good. They're smooth inside. That's what matters. I'm told you're supposed to wear gloves. I'm told this stuff shouldn't, you shouldn't drink it. Normally you're supposed to use a heat gun to get rid of the bubbles in it. But since my molds are made out of wax, uh, that would be really stupid, so I'm not going to be stupid. This is the resin. I will mix it into... Whoa, that is the... Let's try the big one first. That was a horrible pour. <coughs> <coughs> Am I supposed to wear a gas mask for this? Alright, while this dries, I'm going to go, uh... See ya. Alright, while those dries, finishing touches on this. The eyes will be the very last thing we put on and also be the make and break, so it's gonna be such a great finale. Despite my continuity issues, this will at least have a good third act. So all we have left to do here, clipboard, pen, get the hair set right, and the tail. Then we're gonna have a little piece of paper on the clipboard. This is a piece of photo paper that had some Learning Consoles logos on them. It was a failed print, if you must know the lore. And all we're gonna do, basically, is put this like this, glue this to this, done. I've never done anything so fast and confidently in my entire life. I know about clipboards, you people keep doubting me. I got the, the paw things on, and I wanna mount this so that they're still kind of visible. Something like this I think will be a good mount. Let's hold this in place for about a week. There we go, it stays up. Pen. For this, I chose real pen. And that's already holding up just fine. So let's turn this around, get the tail on. All right, here I have this tail. And that should be dry already. There we go. There is one thing left in this entire process now, and that's waiting for the eyes. Tomorrow's gonna be the moment of truth. I certainly won't sleep well tonight, because if this thing doesn't look good, Straight in the trash. I didn't have my projector on. There could have been a really funny picture. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Okay, I tried to use a heat gun. I tried to buff them. I successfully ruined every single one of them. So I ended up just taking the two smallest ones and painting them. They're not as glossy as I'd like them to be, but they will 100% work. So here we are. 
This is the very last step. Just gotta mount these. And an important thing is position. So back to this tried and true picture. Just barely above the nose and to the sides like this. I think that would be the ticket. <coughs> hot glue gun is hot. Ha. And we're just gonna go for it. Nerves are getting to me. Mr. Glue Gun, you can finally be laid to rest. All right, total I think was about 13, 14 hours worth of work. I'm actually pretty excited about how this turned out. It's, it's kind of nice that all of the processes involved with this were things that I could just physically do with my hands. They weren't like, it's not like with the handheld consoles where I might hit a road bump, where I physically would need to go to school to figure out how to overcome some of them. Or it's not like doing old computer VM stuff where I just have to hope that programs are compatible. Something about engaging in these arts and crafts that really just empowers me. Shut up. And we're gonna get a little bit cocky. All those comments, all the comments throughout the whole entire video that a million people have probably left by now saying, oh, you should have done it this way and you should have done that and you should never have been born. How about, how about you make this? All right, that was a little too cocky. I take it back. But mine turned out so much better than yours would have.